Hey guys, it's Thomas in the house and welcome back to my YouTube channel where I talk about surgical nursing, medicine, and everything life in between. My name is Francis, I'm a registered nurse and acute care DMP student as well as a registered nurse for assistant student. And today, um, I'm going to talk about what is surgical pre round For those of you who are new to my channel, I am in the midst of my surgical oncology clinical clerkship for my RNFA program. Um, Usually you are required to do a didactic as well as a clinical portion for the RNFA program and of course I am in the clinical portion of my program. Um, as a first assist NP student, um, every day at least on the surgical oncology service, again it may differ a little bit between um, institutions as well as the different types of surgeries um, as well as the different types of fields, we are assigned anywhere from one to two admitted patients. Um, basically when I say admitted that means patients who are in the hospital post-surgery. Um, in addition to that, you're also assigned a surgical case in which you would scrub in and practice your RNFA skills. Um, Pre-rounding is when you first round on your patient before presenting your patients um, to when the actual surgical rounds take place. In my service in surgical oncology, um, actual surgical rounds usually start around 7.15, so I can complete my pre-rounds before that. So the way I do is I usually arrive by 6 a.m., I look up my patients, review their EMR online, and then perform my pre-rounding. Pre-rounding entails talking with a patient, collecting overnight patient history, performing a focused physical exam, and assessing and developing a plan when presenting the patient during actual rounds. Um, I also like to briefly talk with the overnight nurse that took care of the patient to make sure that I get the most comprehensive understanding of the patient in the most efficient manner. Because remember, you have to do this fairly quickly because you pretty much have like an hour or so, um, depending if you get one to two patients to get all your information that you need prior to presenting the case during rounds. Um, I like this timing because by the time I'm ready to see my patient, most patients are actually starting to wake up around um, around 6.30, 6.45ish. And I don't feel so bad waking up my patients to complete this task. So why is pre-rounding important? Um, it, it enhances your understanding of the patient. It allows you to practice collecting relevant information about your patient and getting feedback from the faculty when you present them during rounds. It allows you to practice focused history taking as well as performing physical exams um, with real-time surgical patients. Um, it helps the team save time by giving a quick picture of the overnight events of your patients. Um, you also get a chance to practice developing assessments as well as plans for your patients in a quick, efficient manner, which will help you when writing your soap notes for your patients and just becoming an overall um, efficient, um, great provider in the future. Um, and overall, speaking of becoming a better provider um, in the future, it just helps you become efficient and patient-focused um, as you continue to build your differential diagnosis and develop the skills in order to identify patterns that are pathognomonic for your diagnoses. So, the question is, what actually happens during surgical rounds now that you've completed your pre-rounding? Um, and who are part of the surgical team um, when, when rounds is about to take place? So on our service, um, again, it could differ from different hospitals, institutions, differ, differ between different fields, uh, but basically on our service, um, you have the students, which entail medical students, PA students, and then me, the MP student, um, where we present each of our patients to the team. And the team actually, you know, the official team actually includes um, besides the students would be the surgical fellow, the lead um, would be the lead surgical fellow, the chief surgical PA, as well as the surgical residents. It could be one to two depending on where they are in their residency program. During rounds, each student is responsible for presenting on the most relevant um, new overnight events to the team, whether it be labs, um, any acute overnight events, um, sim um, as well as symptoms. Then the team asks the students to assess and then from there develop a plan um, for the day. And this and a plan could include advancing the patient's diet, um, discharge, or any other new orders that need to be created um, for this patient. In this video, I'm going to show you a template that I use to pre-round successfully and efficiently um, with my surgical patients. Um, I suggest either creating your own template or using some sort of um, pre-made template. Uh, I actually, in my experience, I actually combined um, information that I generated from a notebook that already has pre-made um, kind of information taking, and it's from it's from Amazon. I bought it, and I'll insert the link to 
this specific notebook, which is very helpful. It is called HMP Notebook. It's by Medical Basics. Um, then I also combined it with my own template. And I made a template that kind of merges both of it into this specific rotation. So when you look up your patients in the EMR, they're really relevant things that you need to look out for in order to get the most um, in order to get the most comprehensive view of your patient um, in an efficient manner. Which information is most relevant for you to take note or to write down? Um, I look at the diagnoses or the HPI. I look at the vital signs, especially you know vital signs for 24 hours, as well as labs. Um, any any you know the lab values that. Um, are new, especially within the past 24 hours. Um, eyes and nose. Eyes and nose is very important in surgery because, again, one of, the, one of the most important things that we look for for in surgical patients post-surgery is their urine output as well as their bowel movement. So, you know, we look at what is the uh, what is the consistency of their urine. What is the odor? Um, is there any infection? What, did they pass bowel movement? Um, they have flatulence. Um, and then also when you're doing your eyes and nose, make sure to include the drains, uh, like JP drains, as well as Foley catheters, or even epidurals. Um, and the next one that I'd like to look is notes written by the overnight nurses, as well as progress notes written by previous providers in previous days, in case you weren't the provider taking care of that patient the day before. Um, I also look at relevant imaging. Um, I only look at imaging if it's absolutely relevant. Um, especially, for example, if it's like, for example, if you have cholecystitis, um, I would look if there's cholo, you know, if there's some sort of obstruction in the cystic ducts or the common bile ducts, etc. Um, I also like to look at pathology and microbiology, again, only if it's relevant. Um, obviously, you want to look at the type of surgery that they had. Um, I also like to look at the meds. Make, and with meds, I don't look specifically at individual meds. I just look if the patient took all of their meds and if their patient refused any medications that is scheduled for them. Um, and then after that, I proceed to see the patient. And before I move on to my next step, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step process in terms of the template that I use, and I'm going to share that template with you. Um, so after I collect my information from the EMR, I then could proceed to see my patient. So again, the most important would be the subjective and the objective. So the subjective would be, you know, this would be the history taking. I would ask about the patient's pain, shortness of breath, chest pain, nausea and vomiting, bowel movement, and urine output. Those are usually the most important things that I ask about the patient. And if there's any other, you know, information that the patient tells you, then I write that down. And then with objective, objective is very, is Objective is measured through your focused physical exam. You want to keep it brief and focused. You don't want to do too many things at once because you're going to be in that room for an hour and you don't have that time. Um, in my in my surgical oncology service, the most um, often systems that I do physical assessments would be abdominal, pulmonary, and cardiovascular systems. Um, then after I you know I visit, then after I visit the patient. I then proceed to talk to the nurse, just asking for anything new, if there's any new acute events that, I, um, that I've missed or you know, any new medications that were prescribed, um, if the patient removed anything like a drain or accidentally pulled out stuff, that's, those, are really, those are really important things that you want to look out for. Um, and then from all this information that I collect, I go back to my station, I kind of assess you know, what is my patient. Um, what is my patient's problem for today and what can I do to kind of help remedy that for that day? Um, and then once I assess my patient, I develop a quick plan in my head and then I present this case to the team. Um, and it's great. I love rounds because it gives you, um, like, you know, the reasons that I give you previously, it just helps you practice to become a really efficient provider in the future, especially when you're working in surgery. Um, so. With that being said, I'm going to show you the template that I use to collect information in order to properly perform surgical pre -rounds. All right, so here's the template that I've created. I'm going to start out first with the subjective part. Remember, subjective is very important. That's where you're going to get a lot of your patient's history. So I start with the here with the chief complaint and the history of present illness, also known as the HPI. I like to focus on neuro slash pain. I do cardiovascular, respiratory, GI for any abdominal issues, and then GU for um, the way that they're voiding. 
And then I quickly jot down their past medical history and past surgical history, especially if it's relevant to what they're um, presenting in the hospital for. And then as soon as I finish subjective, I then proceed to the objective part quickly. And I'll start with generalized. Again, cardiovascular, pulmonary or respiratory. Um, the abdomen or GI. And then I like to like write down their fluids, electrolytes, um, basically if they're on any fluids, IV fluids especially, and then prophylaxis if they're on mechanical versus chemical um, prophylaxis. I like to write down their um, vitals, temperature, the heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure, and SpO2. And, and more specifically, I typically write down um, the, the most recent vital signs and then the um, 24 hours previous. Remember with blood pressure, I also put the range. I put any important meds, especially, I typically only jot down, especially if the patient refused any medications. And then I go to labs. So again, remember you, um, you should know your fishbone and all that good stuff. So you know the white blood cell, platelet, hemoglobin, hematocrit, um, and then your electrolytes, so sodium, potassium, chloride, um, bicarb, um, or carbon dioxide in the hospital, and then BUN, creatinine, and glucose. So just remember, remember to get your fishbone down. Um, and then in surgery, we like to look at calcium, magnesium, and phosphate. Typically, we like looking at magnesium and potassium. On our service, our potassium, we want it to be at least four. Um, and then magnesium, we want it to be at least two. Um, and then here, look, looking also at the total protein, albumin is a big, important one. Uh, we look at the bilirubin levels, especially if there's any biliary obstruction or biliary issues, and then AST, ALT, and the ALP for any liver um, problems, especially, you know, or pancreatitis issues, or, um, but more specifically, liver. Um, and then we, in surgery, they love eyes and nose because, we, you know, one of the most important things we watch out for post-surgery is their ability to void, um, and that would be the intake and output. And usually with urine output, we do a total output divided by the weight times 24, and weight is in kilograms. The units for urine output is um, cc's per kilogram per hour. Um, and just make sure you include any drains or foleys as well. Oops, and then I also forgot to put the plate, uh, PT, PTT, and INR for you know, coagulation factors. Um, and then I also like to look at imaging. Um, imaging is huge, especially in surgery. I want to make sure that it's consistent with what our findings are. Um, and then after that, then I also write the assessment. Mm -hmm. And then we also, um, or not we, but I also write surgery, especially what the planned surgery is. And uh, let me know if you have any questions or if this helps or if there's something that, um, I that I missed that you have any experience in your surgery rotation um, that could be helpful for me. Remember, I learn as much as you guys learn from me. Um, again, um, this is Savas in the house, and I just want to say thank you for watching the video. And I hope you have a good one, and I'll see you in my next one. All right, bye-bye.